Hey, good morning. Thanks for joining me today. If you are new to mushroom hunting, stay tuned because today we're going to do a mushroom hunting 101 video for hunting lobster mushrooms here in the fall in the Pacific Northwest. We're going to show you what to look for. We're going to show you what terrain these things grow in and really what is a good lobster mushroom and how to harvest these guys. Stay tuned. Let's go have some fun. Let's go. Let's go. So let's start with the basics. Where are we? So we're in the Oregon coast range here. We're between 1,500 and 1,600 feet. And we're within, I don't know, 15 to 30 miles from the coast. We're in a pine forest, mixed fir forest. We got conifers, we got pines, we got dug firs. We've got some maple and some birch. It's really important to learn, learn your trees. But basically, if you look at the ground, there's a lot of moss. There's a lot of clovers, called wood sorrel. we are a lot of ferns. You're pretty much in the rainforest. And really what we're looking for is areas that this time of year are impacted by the, the marine layer. Ugh. And uh, get that coastal fog a couple of days a week and then it really influences brings enough moisture surprisingly to bring these lobsters out right now we're at the end of august but you can start finding these things at the beginning of august through october and right now we're heading to an area that's going to have a slight slope to it and you can take a look around you can see what it looks like it's pretty amazing up here we haven't had rain in months yet. This is pretty awesome. A lot of moss, a lot of just awesome stuff to hunt mushrooms. So anyway, so we're heading up to a hill spot here, slight sloped. And with these mushrooms, we're looking for anything bright colored. They're not camouflaged like some of these other out here. Fall mushrooms are pretty easy to spot, but these lobster mushrooms are bright orange in color. Sometimes they're light orange but we're looking for any speck of color. So it's important to move slow with the purpose. You're looking for anything. And I, and I sometimes think I can smell them because they have a little bit of a seafoody smell to them. So you get in the right area, sometimes you can smell these guys. Five minutes into our walk, we already found our first lobster, and it's prime. Check it out. Look at this guy sticking right out of the bottom here. You can tell by the color, the light color, that it's going to be a good one. But look, you can even see the water on top of this guy. So you want to reach underneath it and wiggle it. Oh, this is what I'm talking about. That light color of that mushroom indicates that it's firm and not spongy. If you get one and it's feeling kind of spongy, it means it's already spored out, it's past its prime, it's not gonna be great. But this guy is primo, look at that dude. So you wanna take it, brush it a little bit, clean it up, get it before you put it in your bag. But always, always cover up your holes. It doesn't take that much to do. But while we're here, while we're here, 
you want to look for anything else that looks like a shrimp. You see that little hump over there and one over here? Those are, those are probably lobsters. Let's take a look. See this thing? I don't know if you can see it in the camera. See this little bump here? I can feel it when I tap it, it moves. Here we go. Look at that. Another prime specimen. And then look at this guy. You could probably see it here. If I tap it, it moves a little bit. Bingo. Hello. Oh, there's two of them in here. Little guy. Cover that back up. Look at those. Dang, dang, dang. So let's tripod up here. Let's clean these guys up. So basically, all you want to do is cut the bottom off, clean it up a little bit. I got a brush if you want to brush it. Otherwise, just want to cut the bottoms off, clean them up, put the stumps. Back in the hole. Now I'm a firm believer of leave no trace. That means don't make a mess in the forest, clean up after yourself and hide the evidence. So anybody walking through here now, they're not gonna see that I picked some mushrooms. So they're probably gonna go blow past this area. But if I leave it a mess and it looks like I harvested a bunch of things, people are gonna say, hey, this is a good spot. Somebody's been here. Let's mark it on our GPS. That's what I do. And uh, keep your secret spots a secret, guys. So now that I found a spot that's got good fresh lobsters fruiting in here, now's when I'm gonna slow down and take my time. But check out what this looks like. Look at this landscape here. It's a slight gradual scope, scope, slight gradual slope. We've got some salal, we've got Oregon grape. This is Oregon grape here with the round leaves, the spiky ones, those are salal. But we've got clovers, we've got moss. And so we're gonna look around. I think I see another lobster or a couple of them hiding up there, but we're gonna slow down and look around because these guys like to fruit together. So if you find one or two, you're going to find another one, like I just did now. Slowing down, check this out. Slowing down, looking for a little bit of a shrimp. Look at this guy, another Primo, prime lobster. And anytime you see this stuff popping up, you want to look around. I'm going to go up here because I know I saw some more from the distance. Uh-oh, oh my goodness, look at this guy. You can barely see him, but... Oh my goodness, holy cow. <laughs> look, there's another one there. But look, look up there, there's some more. Oh boy. Now, this is an area that I was at a couple of days ago. <laughs> you can look over here, if you saw my last video, this is the spot that I found a bunch of them last time. But I didn't even get to this area that's 10 feet from the last spot. And I see several other lobsters that have either popped up in the last two days, which is possible, or I had already gotten my fill and I left them. So um, either way, these are still prime. So let's harvest these guys. There's a few more and uh, they keep going. We're not even to the spot that I wanted to hunt yet. So we're still on the way. So. Good day, guys. So let's head up here. Another area. As I'm going through here, I am looking for any kind of shrumps, bumps, anything that's out of the ordinary. Look at this. This must have been one that either I turned over or somebody else turned over. But look. This guy. Look, you can barely see this little orange here. Let's peel it back. Oh yeah, look at this thing here. This is a dried dyer's polypore from last year. A lot of people use that to dye fabric. 
if you're into that kind of thing let's just cut the bottom off of this guy you can see there's a couple of worm holes in here but I don't think it's gonna go very far so let's pack up this guy here yeah he's still good he's not uh, he's not bad he's a little spongy let's see how far those wormholes go huh? not bad see look at that it's still a little eh, he might dehydrate okay we'll take him but let's hide the let's hide the evidence look over here this is another big dude this might have been one that I picked last week but look at this under here I think I missed this one. Oh my oh he's spongy but a big one look at that guy let's package him back up leave him in there okay now I see some more up here and look I don't know if you can see it way back there see that big orange thing way back there and look Another piece of orange there. There's a bunch of older ones here. Dang. Let's go investigate. Here we go. This is another freshie. See how light colored it is? That's what you want. Sure, there's some in that hill over there but look there's two look at that dude right there and then another colossal size next to it but look there's another freshie over there oh yeah again take good note of what we're seeing here it's Oregon Oregon it's wood sorrel it's edible Whoa, that one was sour, but it tastes kind of like a green grape. It's good for salads and things, so. Whew. That was a good one. Let's go check out these two big dudes over here. And I think one or both of them might be okay. But look, look at this guy here. Mm. Oh. Holy cow. Now I'm gonna say, this guy is good. Now look at this guy, it's orange. It's got kind of ridges, almost like a giant chanterelle. No real gills or whatever. Now let's cut the bottom off of this guy. Yeah, no wormholes. I'm gonna call him a keeper. So look at this guy. Now this one, looking differently look at all this white spores and even just touching this guy like, ow I can feel he's more he's more spongy and he's starting to fall apart so let's leave him in here and do his thing probably another one in here yep here we go another young one that's a good one okay good stuff this is what I mean when I talk about like slowing down, taking your time, looking around. Once you get into the mushrooms, just pause a little bit. Not everything has to be on fast forward out in the forest here. Just take your time, look around, take your time, listen, smell, feel, use all your senses that you got because you need them. Because I can, I can smell that we're in the lobsters right now because they have a little bit of a seafoody smell to them and uh use what you got guys so we're heading over to another one that i could barely see sticking out from one angle i think it's going to be good well let's see it can you guys see it pretty hard not to right now this one it's right here but look at how close it is to these old guys here there's a bunch of old ones here that i saw last time look there's another one hiding up over there but I think this one might be, well, it's full of dirt, but yeah, he's a good one. Let's check him. And what we're looking for 
here is if there's any kind of wormholes in here or brown that's not too bad any kind of wormholes you want to you want to leave them because they'll start to break down and got bugs in there but if you don't see any wormholes in there this guy's good to go all right check these guys out this one should be good uh, he's just started to spore out but he's still kind of hard this one Oops. You want to check and see if they're spongy at all. They're going to start to break down before you even process these guys. I see something. Can you guys see it? Look, there's an old one there. But look in here. I don't know if you can see it. Look at this, dude. Okay, let's see if we can... Do a little surgery here. Oh, yes. Huh. Let's check them. A couple of wormholes. They only go to the surface here. This guy's a keeper. Dang. We're heading to our spot here. We haven't even gotten to. See these four spots I've got here? They are directly, they're directly that way. I don't know how far they are. They're close. But we haven't even hunted this area yet. And I imagine that things are going to be pretty awesome when we get over there. So, I know I say this all the time, but all these spots here, I haven't hunted before so they're now on my gps uh as as comeback spots for next time but these new spot these other spots that are on the gps i have a feeling they're going to be loaded but i think this whole hillside is loaded with them and nobody's been here i haven't seen any evidence of anybody except me and i hide the evidence so um but i'm looking for it so when you're out here looking if you find a bunch of holes that people dug or turned over mushrooms or things like that, that means somebody's been here and they probably harvested some mushrooms. So even if you don't find any, mark that spot and come back next time, a little earlier, maybe a week or so before. And uh, it'll be your new secret spot. So. so I just came across another awesome honey hole. We just pulled three out of the ground, but look, look at this. We got one there, two big ones over there another one over there and then there's another one right over there sometimes you get lucky like i would say not bad for a bonehead this is my shroom hunter bags pretty cool huh this looks familiar look at these big dudes look those are all old and spored out but look, somebody might have missed these. Old, old, boulder. Let's see what I got under here. Oh, that's a pretty one. Look, we got this little friend here. But look, we got another shrimp right there. Let's see what that looks like. Another freshie. Let's clean up our mess here. There's another beauty. Look at that. Dang. What a monster that dude would have been. He's all spored out too. There's some more over there. Look at this beautiful valley here, guys. How awesome is that? Well, I think I might have found the biggest lobster mushroom in my entire mushroom hunting career. Unfortunately, I think it's probably spored out. I remember last year my buddy Bob found one this big, but this one... We'll check it out, but look. Can you see this monster? It might be holding up this log. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> what an old beast. I tell you what, this has got to be my best mushroom lobster day ever. I hope you guys learned something. I mean, check out this haul. This is one 
of my two bags. This one is absolutely loaded. I still see more on the way back to the car. The funny thing is, I can still see the car. We haven't come very far. We just come up the hill, maybe a couple hundred yards. And they're everywhere. So, you know, I know this is a beginner video. I hope you guys learned something here. Hopefully some tips and tricks to get you into your own lobster mushrooms. But man, what an awesome day. I gotta go. I can't carry anymore. I feel like a pack mule carrying two big bags of these things home. And it's gonna take me a while to clean them. But if you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you like the channel, subscribe, tell your friends, and I look forward to joining you in the next awesome adventure. Thanks for joining.